All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, you are still watching Ways Human Resource Professional Day. It's celebrated on September 26th every year. It is a day to recognize and appreciate the hard work and dedication of HR professionals. Now, HR professionals play a vital role in organization of all sizes, helping to recruit, hire, and develop employees, especially on creating a very healthy work environment and ensuring employees are fairly treated and they are also treated with respect and dignity. Very, very critical role. So um, I don't know. I think we had this, were you on set when we talked about this day last year? You know, I think mm, if sure. there ever was a time where HR professionals are critical in um, organizations, now is really the mm. time. Because again, with the, 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 the rise, I mean, the changing economy, the, mm. the, the voracious nature of um, our economic power, you know, some of us are, I mean, people, some people are actually struggling, yeah. keeping up with, you know, be able, being able to even leave, your living expenses and all of that. Mm. So every, I mean, I was speaking with my HR, um, my HR today, I was talking to her, I said, see, we need to sit down and see how we can just put some buffers, you know, in terms of salary restructuring, mm. add a few thousands here, just to help make sure that everybody is. So now is the time we need that humanity because yeah. a lot of people are, I mean, they say that part of what caused the traffic today is because of the speculations around well, increased yeah. in, in, increment again in the fuel situation. So, I mean, if there was ever a time where HR personnel and professionals ahead of departments they need to really sit down with the management of the company to mm. say, you know what, how do we mitigate some of this hardship that is coming on um, on people? Yeah. yeah. A lot of creativity is needed right now, I think. Um, first of all, having a human face mm -hmm. is very important. Uh, people need to think beyond. I know that there's also thinking about the money, Perfect. thinking about um, the bottom line for the company, but I think that beyond money as well, there are a lot of other things that... HR professionals who are thinking broadly can also do to help people. Um, things like looking at maybe extending HMO plans to other family members, maybe parents. Not everything has to be direct cash, mm. but there just has to be some creativity because, I mean, companies are also, we're all struggling in the same economy, mm -hmm. right? So you're not liquid. The companies sometimes are also not, you know, as buoyant of or making course. as much money because someone was saying to me today how she's spending a, th she's having to buy a thousand liters of diesel and diesel is now over a thousand naira. Mm. So imagine now having to spend over a million for your business business just to buy diesel mm. and that money might not make it through the whole that diesel might not get you through the whole month so businesses are also struggling so i think that you know the best hr professionals today are looking at creating you know things like creating the right kind of culture is very important people today when they're going to get jobs they're asking questions like do you work remotely do you offer mm. hybrid ah. all of these things are you know they don't they're not essentially direct costs you know mm. you're not adding to the salary but they're things that you know so it's, it's thinking broadly now around how you manage your people, how you still make your company um, a good place, a good hire, somewhere that people still want to, a good place to work, mm. you know, um, and you, you have people engaging with the work that you're doing and you're still able to retain talent because beyond Jackpa, huh. as people are Jackpa and people are also moving around mm. locally. So even being able to retain your talent locally mm. is tough. very important. Mm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, I mean, to all our HR professionals, you have a lot of job to do in this season. Mm -hmm. We wish you guys wisdom because you need it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what did we find in this? Do you let me come to you? Um, NLC and, the, and trade union. The Trade Union Congress um, have de um, declared an indefinite strike starting October the 3rd. And um, they have um, told Nigerians to stockpile foodstuffs because the strike will shut down the economic activities in the country. So, you know, as, um, about two or three weeks ago when they were talking about this strike, it was just NLC. TUC kept saying, oh, they're not a part of it, they're not interested. But now that they're in some form of agreement, I honestly don't know. And this is, uh, well, as a result, their excuse is um, it's the result of the removal of the petrol subsidy, you know, and the continuous demonstration and willingness and um, complete lack of initiative by the government, you know, to 
alleviate the sufferings of the people. Mm. So October 3rd, that's just a couple of days away. Yeah, next Tuesday. So when they say we should stockpile, me and and what, do people... <laughs> 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 we want to see the stock. We, 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 we survive. Please, 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 please. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, we see, see. I don't believe that. What the strike will look yeah, like. Yeah, because I, mean. like, I think they, they are relevant. You know, maybe they don't see that. They, don't, they are not relevant in this situation. People don't so even want the strike. Nobody yeah. wants the strike. Uti, I'm, I mean, Mary is laughing, but it's the truth. You've lost relevant, but you're just not accepting it that your your words don't hold any you're weight again. Which will you gain it with? So the, the question is, so what are you are fighting for? So what are you asking for exactly. and what's realistic? So I don't even know what the ask is. But I think the very first time they were saying how they should reverse the subsidy completely. It's not it's possible. Not possible. So, so I think that it's, it's really just... What exactly? Do you I mean, was it not you that said if mm. they want to take the petrol to one thousand, let them take it and let us all it? Mean? Because at this point, I've had it. You understand? The only pain that I feel is that see, we, I mean, if you calculate how much um, um, what's it called gas costs mm. when you're fueling your tank abroad, it's quite expensive. Yeah. But you will not find them spending ten hours in traffic. Mm. Do you understand? So even if the even if the price of the petrol was to go up. Let us even have good motor, uh, motorable roads. So that you know that, okay, yes, if I tell you I'll be there in five minutes, I'm there in five minutes. Mm. Mary, I don't like this, you're smart. <laughs> Let me be on the peace. road scene for how many years? And like, are we now saying that now when they increase the petrols, now they will fix you? Please let the government stop. Thank you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what did you find for us in the news? Mary has spoken. Veteran actor Yemi Adeyemi, a.k.a. Suara. Suara, yes. Suara mm. passes on. Oh, wow. According to a statement released on Monday, September 25th, 2023, by the bereaved family, Adeyemi died on Sunday, September 24th, 2023. The statement is signed by a deceased son, Ade Dotun Adeyemi. It reads, It is with a heavy heart, but with total submission to God, that we announce the passing of our beloved husband, father, grandfather. Brother, uncle, Oliemi Lawrence at DME, who went to be with the Lord on so Sunday. Mm. Um, for those who remember him from Superstory. Mm. So it's very sad, but Thank he left his mark so on earth. So may he so rest in peace. May he so rest yeah. in peace. Yeah. Let's see, let move on to you. Um, so my story is actually a few days old, but I saw it and I thought uh, if no one had taken it, I would I would just bring it up. Um, it says monthly sanitation to resume in Lagos, and that's mm -hmm. where our governor, Babajide Songulu, says he hints that the state's monthly sanitation campaign would be brought back. So I think this was stopped sometime in 2016, if I remember yeah, correctly. Um, and this was the Saturday morning cleaning. Um, it says that he was going around uh, last Friday on inspection to check adherence to the government's environmental cleaning measures in various parts of the state. And he was expressing his displeasure as to what he found in terms of people flouting environmental regulations, trading along roadsides, under bridges, even visiting the underbridge at in Lagos Island, of course, which caught fire the other day. And I think that the story for me is not even about environmental sanitation. I think that the place of public education, right, People, we, we've never had, well, I shouldn't say that as strong. Um, Loma brought some sanity into Lagos in terms yeah. of how, you know, ref the disposal of rubbish and refuse and all of that was handled. But prior to that, there was that community awareness in terms of education, mm -hmm. people understanding that, you know, cleaning out your gutters, yeah. people coming together to clean their neighborhoods. There was a lot of education around that at the grassroots level. Mm -hmm. So even though people all oh, had a place where maybe they were going to throw tr rubbish and they were burning and all of that, but there was that knowledge. So today you've scrapped this for five, what is it now? I can't even do math anymore. Seven years plus? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're saying, oh, people are not adhering to the regulations. Are you still teaching people? Are you still telling people about it? What are the you know, regulations? Even when you talk about, thank you, when you talk about the markets, you know, what work is being done to make sure that, you know, these yellow okay. jars and the markets are set up, they're cleaning, they're taking care of their environment. <laughs> all of these things are important. So you all of a sudden locking us down again for a few hours on a Saturday morning saying we should clean. That's not the problem. That's not the solution, right? So <laughs> You have all these, um, what are they called? Is this CSOs, Kai, and all the rest of them? All these. 
let them do their jobs. Go out, educate Oti. people, and let's get this done the right as way. As long as we continue to have people driving on the road on Saturday, like if I had, I may have told them, government, they are not, they are not, they are not helping us. Give us authority. Give us koboko. Do you understand? Know uh, like, give me the capacity to be able to slap somebody. Because you see some go, it, it, it will go extreme. No, yeah. you're not getting the point. The, 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 the logic behind is, is that we have to enforce, first of all, the culture mm. of this no litter. Mm. And with so much, what's it called? Um, adherence. Yeah, the same way when they start, uh, if you talk on the phone, Do you get arrested. This no thing. litter, let us even start from there. You see a, somebody is an SUV. Yeah. You can't, like yesterday, I think he went the up out in, the window. In, a, in a, what's it called? She was inside a mess with you. Now brought out a canned, um, one of these canned drinks. Mm. Immediately she, this is just wound down and I dumped it. I can't. Like literally. Yeah. Listen, I can't that you're saying. I can't. I literally yeah. rode in a car one day with somebody to a battle. And the whole journey there, he was complaining about the government. He was talking if he was in office, this was going to do this, how he's going to do it. After we bought Samala, you know, if you go to a bad uh -huh. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we Samala. So we bought Samala, we were rushing back to beat traffic. Uh -huh. And he's eating in the car. We would try to and as soon as he finished, he just warmed up. Down, down uh -huh. Washed his hands. You know, the uh -huh. shock with which I was. No. Uh -huh. The one that happened to me, this uh, no. to, the person that was inside my car bought um, corn. I say, Oga, oh, it's not where I am. Bring the dirty. Is it bad? I got him. I got him. He said, no, 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 no. I said, eh, eh, eh. we are complaining about government. We are mm. the problem. Yeah, we're so you must first of all start mm. build that culture. You see my car, right? Let it be dirty. Yeah. And when I come back, I, when I get to my house, you clean my, my security up. guy would help me clean it up. That is better. <laughs> but you're not part. You're part of the problem. You're not shouting government. That's and the government, it is a lack of creativity that just disturbs me. Because why would you resume Saturday sanitation? How many of us here seated on this table? Mm. Did you ever get up one Saturday to say you want to clean? Yeah, me, I did. I did. I did when I was serving my yeah. NYSE, and that was in 2006. <laughs> I was, when I was living in somebody's house. The man wanted to use us to remove all the grease stain that, that has been there for years. So every Saturday morning, wake me and my sister. And I did when I was younger. Do you understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. But literally, it, it is, like, like I said, it is the lack of creativity. So it's, it's the awareness for me in that somebody like that doesn't think about it and doesn't know that she shouldn't do it. It's just, and it's so many things. So when you talk about the culture for me, it's so many things. It's like when... In this here, Lekki, I see people in their big SUVs driving one way just because they cannot wait. Mm. And I'm like, tomorrow, that same person go open their mouth and say the government yeah. is the problem. I mean, I say it all the time. The government didn't fall from the sky. They yeah. are yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So yeah. talking about uh, this thing, because this one is a sad news. Mm. Business Day wrote a report that more troubles for travelers as Nigerian passport face devaluation. So as it is now... <laughs> It says that apart from the high fares Nigerians have to pay to travel to other countries, Nigerians holding green passport are faced with another problem of experiencing visa on arrival denials. So it's more of all those countries that you go mm. for visa on, on, on arrival for several countries as a result of the devaluation of the passport globally. So in a recent released third quarter early passport index, which is an authoritative ranking of all world passports according to the number of destinations their holders can access without prior visa. Nigeria takes the bottom spot as a country with one of the 20 worst passports to hold in 2023. Can I just point Jesus out that you are 200 plus, 200 plus million people who have a penchant for migration mm. now? This thing that is happening, there are a bunch of factors, so that we don't just say it in isolation. Yeah, yeah. Like somebody just the one that mm. and because it's green, mm. there are factors around this. The fact is, yes, our economic situation shows that our net migration is going up. People are leaving the country in droves. The fact is, these countries that offer visa on arrival is based on certain assessments. It's Showing that you're going to go home. <laughs> what are the number? What's happening in your country? Mm. All of these things play a factor. So it's not just because some people sometimes feel like it's a witch hunt to say thing about Nigerians. It's not about you know Get migration and these policies. They exist to protect countries. I mean, smile. look at look at America at the moment. America is facing a 
huge problem. Mm. Like, literally, people are just trekking to America. Mm. Like, you know, the only thing that makes me happy when I see those reports is that it's not Africans. Mm. You know when it's Europe, they show us crossing in boats, we're hanging <laughs> to the side of the boat, <laughs> we're doing all of this. At least the American one is Venezuela, yes, Mexico, Mexico, all of those guys, right? But they are literally... Facing like, I saw that report problem, yes. today, and I was... It was distressing to see people leaving their belongings behind, crossing the water, over the buoys, over the razor wire, just to get to America. Meanwhile, the America that they're trying to get to is about to face a government shutdown. Mm. So, in fact, the whole world right now is not so. Can we just accept mm. that the whole world has gone crazy? Mm. Because America is facing a government shutdown for probably the second or third time. Mm. Unheard of. Mm. Like, I mean, so the problems in this world are Nigerian passports. Okay, mm, so in, there with in, us. in other words, in Liu, <laughs> that's the English, in Liu of what she has said. Face your God. Mm. <laughs> and face your country. My sister. Face, face your hustle. 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 Face your hustle.